question of uh, intelligence, the state of intelligence in the United States. Uh, and we expect him to talk about the current events in terms of where we are presently with the administration and the question of intelligence and surveillance and that delicate balance that exists between intruding into the privacy rights of the citizens of this country along with the need for security. I'm so pleased to have Serge Tomasi and the chairperson of the World Affairs Council of Orange County here. And today I'm more pleased to have his wife here as well. So, yes, Mona. Uh, <laughs> Mona. 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 Yes. What do you think about the World Affairs Council and the, the wonderful things your husband is doing? There's, there's so many interesting speakers, uh, ambassadors, people from all different backgrounds and, and, and different um, political views. So how do you put up with this? He's constantly connecting with different ambassadors, different head of the state somehow. <laughs> Francis from Saudi Arabia. How do you feel? It? You feel kind of like uh, frustrated, important, uh, happy? What? What is that? Well, it's his passion, so I think it's an outlet for him. So I think it's a good thing. So, so you see this as a positive thing? Yes, it's positive. Perfect. So what, what do you think about that? Well, you know, our, our mission here at the World Affairs Council is to educate and inform the public in our membership on world affairs. And we have a diversity of membership. Exactly. We're open. We have a, 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 an open forum. We may disagree with the speaker, but we're willing to listen. And we want different ideas to be espoused. So that way, out of that comes the best ideas, comes analysis, discussion. And we have a free-for-all discussion about that and uh, hopefully some implementation of policy down the road that's, uh, that reflects the public membership. Exactly. And I think the, the uh, World Affairs Council has such a big impact, in, not only in Orange County, but also people coming from Los Angeles. And because the, the variety of the speakers that we have, we, we yeah. talked about that before, that yeah. how really wonderful World Affairs Council uh, is doing. But we introduce Orange County to world leaders, to ambassadors, exactly. from dignitaries from other countries. They come to Orange County, they meet our membership, and I think we have a positive impact in terms of representing Orange County to the world. So who is going to be the speaker tonight? Well, tonight we have uh, Trita, Mr. Trita uh, Parsi. Dr. Uh, Trita Parsi, yeah, yes. I, I know him very well. And uh, he has expertise on Iran, and his book specifically deals with the negotiations and the treaty that was reached between Iran and the United States on the nuclear uh, issue. Uh, and so, so he has opinions on that. He's written a book on that. Uh, certainly his perspective is a perspective we want to hear. I mean, we've heard other perspectives, but I think it's something important for people to hear it and, uh, uh, and then to ask him some tough questions uh, in terms of uh, understanding his position. I think uh, by inviting these type of speakers and people who had lots of information about the situation like in the Middle East, we have different ambassadors uh, previous yes. months, and Srita Farsi is a well-known uh, among Iranian American, yes. and he's very knowledgeable about the topics that you are inviting, and I'm so pleased to be here tonight, yes. and I'm always happy and lucky to cover the World of the Council. Well, thank you, Alex, very much. It's always a pleasure to have you. And, and I think our, our council has very, a very important role here in Orange County and in the community here in Southern California to inform, to educate, and to give a platform for world speakers to come here and speak on the topics. Perfect. Uh, I'm looking forward after Trita Parsi, Dr. Trita Parsi talk. Yes. I'm going to ask you about some kind of analysis of his talk. So looking forward to, uh, to the presentation. Th and thank you very much. Thank you, thank Alex. You. Thank you. To have you on TV again. <laughs>of Orange County to give us a little analysis of the talk. Yes. Well, I think uh, Dr. Parsi gave us a br brilliant analysis 
uh, I think, an insider's perspective of what led up to the ultimate agreement between Iran and the United States on the, uh, the nuclear issue. And I think he offered some very interesting dynamics as to what motivated both sides to do what they did uh, and what ultimately led to the successful negotiations in reaching an agreement. Uh, I think that while there are critics of the agreement, uh, I think Dr. Parsi made it very clear that uh, he believes that the, one has to be realistic of what could have been achieved in these negotiations. Uh, in view of the adverse positions, the extreme adverse positions that were taken, and where we ultimately ended up in reaching an agreement that, uh, you know, as my last question to him was, is it short term, is it long term? You know, no one really knows that. But it certainly averted, according to him, uh, what looked to be a possibility of a war, or the alternative of that, uh, which was a nuclear Iran. It seems to me the complexity of the situation, he explained it very yeah. one nicely in a way so I think it was very understandable understandable yeah. so he explained that the, the complexity of this situation the yes. negotiation on many countries and this seems to me was planned long before even the media was getting involved with this so yeah. how did you how did you take that well it was interesting he mentioned the secret negotiations exactly. that were taking place uh, which is not unusual in, in the world of diplomacy yes. uh, you know we we hear it in the publicly we hear things after the fact and we're not necessarily getting the inside story. And he obviously had an inside role uh, in what led up to the yes. negotiations, but certainly he knew the history of what had led up to that. I thought it was very interesting we said Oman played a very pivotal role in serving as the broker. Yeah, it was new for, to me yeah. in a way, so I, you know, I, I was following the whole thing, but uh, he mentioned that uh, the Sultan of Oman was very instrumental in this. And uh, you know, I can't believe a tiny country like Oman, I mean, coming and, into this situation and, and serving as a mediator as a broker exactly. and, and communicating the position of the United States in writing I think was a breakthrough but it was also interesting I thought to Alex when he mentioned was a better he posed the question was a better deal possible and he said yes but it was earlier administration during the Bush administration but because there was no engagement diplomatic engagement the better deal as he saw it was basically slipped away uh, because of the lack of engagement. And uh, you know, he raised some interesting perspectives there. And, and I thought one of the most interesting things he mentioned is the Israeli government taking a hardline position against the Iran deal, whereas the defense people, the intelligence people were in favor of it, saying a war should be avoided. So there was the political considerations versus the, you know, the uh, security considerations in Israel. Right. But the interesting thing is when he said that because of Netanyahu's, Prime Minister Netanyahu's hardline position, position yeah, exactly. that further encouraged a resolution because the alternative, again, was war yeah. or a nuclear Iran. And I think either of those uh, uh, outcomes were not something the United States wanted, uh, or the rest of the world wanted for that matter. It's a great question. Um, precisely because of the uncertainty as to whether the U.S. will stay within the deal or not, most international banks, despite the fact that it is now legal for them to do so, have still stayed out of Iran. Not because they don't want to, but because they're afraid that they will go into Iran and six months later the U.S. will pull out and once again they will be sanctioned. It was very costly for them to leave Iran in the first place and they don't want to have to go through that process once again. As a result, the Iranian people, frankly, have not experienced much relief. The Iranian economy has picked up. In fact, its uh, growth was projected by IMF to be roughly 6.6 to 7 percent, which almost any country would kill for. He shared, excuse me, he shared with us insight exactly, as to what was exactly. going on, the dynamics, the dynamics, the leverages the parties had, the dynamics, why he believes that the hardcore uh, embargo uh, sanctions were not effective. It simply emboldened the hardline conservatives. The, basically, the 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 uh, ayatollahs in Iran to equally take a hardline position to show that neither side was conceding on that basis, exactly. and that eventually perhaps led to the uh, the compromise. And the other thing I was going to say, Alex, that you know, like you, I learned quite a bit here, <laughs> yes. and uh, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, he said that uh, Iran's best interests are not served by having nuclear weapons and to have nuclear weapons spread throughout the Middle East, exactly. where its 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 its, its advantages 
in terms of size, uh, economics, and non-nuclear military options would be evaporated if the rest of the Middle East becomes nuclear and the smallest country in the, in the Middle East could now Some of the question and answer were very interesting. Do you, you want to point that to some of the questions they were asked? One of them was, uh, in fact, the one you, you brought up was interesting, and uh, he mentioned that the nuclear uh, situation was even during the Shah was offered to the, the yeah. Shah of Iran by, U, by yeah. USA. And by the US. How yeah. really things changed? That's amazing yeah. to a well, layman person. <laughs> you know, I think he said that the Shah wanted the option at some point, yes. if it became necessary, uh, to deal with Russia or the Soviet Union at the yes. time. And uh, without the U.S. willing to engage the Soviet Union or Russia in defense of Iran, that Iran would have to stand on its own. And so that option was given to the Shah. Well, that option then transfers itself to the next regime. Exactly, exactly. And so there we go. And, and, and then we had the genesis of where we are today. Uh, but, but I think that uh, I think he gave a very, very uh, strategic analysis as to the dynamics of what was motivating the parties, what was at stake. We heard the public rhetoric, but he also explained, as he say, as an insider, what was really going on underneath exactly. and what the parties were, were using to negotiate with each other. Again, this was another presentation by Board of Council of Orange County, which um, every month uh, they have wonderful speakers and people coming, giving a lot of insight uh, to the audience about uh, what's going on politically. And I, I understand next month you're going to have some European type of uh, Yes. Coming, yes. You want to explain We're going to have going the former U.S. ambassador uh, to Belgium, uh, Ambassador kind Gutmann. Changing the shift, you know, yeah, we're going <laughs> to Europe, and I think there, you know, there's there's fertile ground there in Europe in terms of discussing the dynamics there, starting with U.S. European relations, exactly. U.S. involvement in NATO. Uh, certainly, the immigration issue uh, is a big issue in Europe right now. Uh, and so there's some interesting dynamics there, and uh, so we, we, we're looking, you know, we're a World Affairs Council, so we look at all the, uh, the issues around the world and, and, uh, and try to present those issues and topics and speakers with expertise to our audience and to our membership. So that's what we do, Alex. So again, uh, I want to thank you and your team for putting this type of program together, the World Affairs Council of Orange County. Please join us, uh, join the World Affairs Council of Orange County and help them as much as you can, and you want to be one, I mean, you're going to be surprised to see the kind of speakers they have here. So you're never going to see this kind of thing on the uh, media in a, in a way. So certainly not the in-depth analysis uh, exactly. and the insight that our speakers give us. Okay. Alex. So thank well, you. Thank very much. you again, and uh, hope we see you again on the next program. Have a wonderful day.